and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I wanted to show you how to paint a dog where you have very limited colour shifts, so you are effectively painting in neutrals. Before we start, I just wanted to show you a little trick that will help you identify the colour shifts in your reference photos. So you need to hold up a piece of mid-grey card against your reference photo. You will then be able to see if the colour that you are looking at is more red, more blue or more yellow than the grey piece of card. I do this all the time for really tricky paintings like this one, but I'll speak more about this as we go along. So let's start painting then. I'm painting onto a canvas board and I've covered it in a wash of raw sienna and terps and then penciled out my dog on top. So you can cover your canvas in whatever colour you like. It doesn't have to be this colour, but this is the colour that works for me. You can leave it white if you prefer and just go straight into your underpainting. I personally can't work straight onto white. I find the glare is very uncomfortable on my eye. So I always cover my canvas in this coloured wash. But I just really wanted to stress that this is not necessary if you don't want to. So I'm doing a mini underpainting then in raw umber plus terps. I'm using the terps to thin my paint and lighten it. I'm keeping it all very loose and just trying to get a sense of my values. This is not a full underpainting, but more of a, an underpainting wash. I want to keep my painting as fresh as possible, so I'm keeping my paint thin and transparent. I should probably mention then that I am using Gamsol to thin my paints. I'm using a flat brush to start with. If you have a look in the description box of this video, you'll also see that I've listed all the colours and mediums used in this painting. I'm not using white paint at this stage. I'm just varying my values with how much terps I add to my paint. So I'm now painting the eyes and it requires a little bit more precision so I've switched to a small round brush. I want to make sure that my eyes are in the right place before I lose them in those dark shadows. Where I'm painting in neutrals I'm much more likely to do an underpainting like this. If I were to do a painting with a lot of say saturated colour like red or blue I would be more likely to go straight in with those colours. 
as the problem with raw umber is it does have quite a muting effect on your colours, which is great if you have quite a neutral painting, but not so great if you have a lot of colour in your painting. So just adjust accordingly to what you are painting. And if you feel that you don't want to start with an underpainting, then you don't have to. I don't always. I've decided to add a little bit of white paint to that chest area, but still with lots of terps and raw umber. I'm using zinc titanium white, which is a more transparent white, and I find really good for painting white fur. So I definitely recommend you giving it a go if you haven't used it before. I tend to use Gamblin. I'm not sure what other brands do zinc titanium white, but I'm sure you could find it if you Googled. You'll notice throughout the painting that I do switch brushes quite a bit and I would encourage you to always be switching your brush. Switching your brushes allow you to make lots of different marks which gives a lovely variety to your painting surface. You know, it really does help mix it up a bit. Painting in the background then, as my background is cooler than the body of the dog, I'm going straight in with the ultramarine plus white plus terps. Because the paint is so thin, the raw CN is actually, it's showing through, so it's not cooled it down too much. It's really just a judgment call, really, that you can make when you get really comfortable with your palette. You understand what it can do, and so it helps guide the choices that you make. So if this canvas had not been covered in raw sienna, I would not have done this with the background. It would have been far too cool a colour to start with. So that's your first layer done then. I'm just going to show you a photographic still of the painting at this stage so you can see a bit more of the detail that the video is not picking up. So I let this dry and then I have another go at it the next day. Okay then, so the second layer. I'm now going in with my colours. So for the black areas, I'm using a mix of ivory black plus cad red.
I'm working with two photos. One is black and white and the other one is colour. At this stage, I'm letting the black and white photo guide me as to what I should be laying down for my darkest blacks. As a general rule then, my darkest blacks always tend to be cad red and ivory black as generally I want these deep blacks to be warm because I tend to follow the process of shifting between warm then to cool then to warm. It's very rare that I go from cool to warm to cool but I do sometimes but generally it's always the other way around. So I will always warm up my blacks with cad red. I'm just changing my brush depending upon the areas that I'm painting. So for detailed areas, I'm using a small round brush, like around the eyes. But for the dog's coat, I tend to stick with a flat brush. And for the background, maybe a filbert brush. You might notice that I'm constantly rotating the brush around in my fingers because I want a variety of different marks to be laid down. Sometimes I'm using the narrow edge and sometimes I'm using the fatter edge. As you move out of those really deep black areas into the lighter areas, I'm using ivory black plus white. I'm really keeping it very simple at this stage. My warm blacks being cad red and black and my cool blacks being black plus white. My paint is still quite thin as I'm still adding a bit of terps to it to keep it flowing. You can see the raw umber underneath so it's adding a little bit of warmth to the ivory black and the white. For the white areas of the coat, which are in the deep shadows, 
I've mixed up ultramarine plus yellow ochre light into my black plus white. My paint is still very, very thin. I'm just working on trying to get those values right and any obvious shifts in temperature that I can see. I'm using this same mix of ultramarine deep plus yellow ochre light plus black plus white for the darker areas in the dog's face. I have however added more terps to lighten my mix so I'm really controlling the values by using the terps just to thin it down at this stage. For my lighter areas across the dog's face, I'm using white plus yellow ochre light, but I'm using it very, very thinly. So that's layer two done then. I'll show you another still, um, photograph still, so you can see the colours a little bit more clearly. I let this dry and then I have another go at it the next day. Layer three then, I'm still trying to get a bit more accurate with my values and work up those layers of paint. As a rule, I don't always do a painting in a set number of sittings. It really depends on the complexity of the painting or perhaps how good my concentration is that day. Sometimes it's, at, it's actually really poor, so I, I don't want to force the painting if I'm not feeling up for it. But this is why I really like this method of painting and why it suits me so well, because it removes the stress as much as it possibly can from painting. Because if I haven't got it right in that sitting, I don't really worry about it. I just think, oh, well, I'll sort it out tomorrow and move on to another area. I find on the whole, it prevents me from overworking the painting. Although this does still happen sometimes, so it's not foolproof.
But you can see with this method though, that it really does begin to emerge. My paint is still really quite thin, even on this third layer. I'm really not a heavy painter generally. I tend to lay my paint really quite thinly at the best of times. I think it's just my natural style. I prefer thin translucent layers rather than to sort of lay it on very, very thick. I always think you can keep adding, but it just, it gets hard when you start scraping it off, but you can scrape it off if you make a mistake.
So that's layer three done then. So I'll leave that and then have another look at it the next day. And I'll show you the photo still again, just for your reference. Layer four then. Okay, so this is where all the work is done. You'll probably notice that the first part of the video is like about 20 minutes. So from layers one, two and three, 20 minutes. And then layer four is another 20 minutes. So this is your longest sitting. The first three sittings, you know, you aren't very long at all. But layer four is where all the work is done. So in the last three layers then, not only have I been working out my values, but I've also been working out my colour harmonies. So for this painting, I've decided to follow the colour harmonies of red and green. So in my warmer areas, I'm adding red based colours and in my cooler areas, I'm using green based colours. So just to be clear then, when I refer to red and green generally, I'm referring to a mix of colours that make a red based colour and a mix of colours that make a green based colour. I'm not referring to highly saturated green and red, but you'll see what I mean as we go on. This is where it, it actually <coughs> it gets quite complicated. So the temptation is to paint what you know. So for example, I know this is a black and white dog. So it would be very tempting to paint mainly in black and white, which you could, you could totally do, but it's the color shifts that give you the convincing sense of form. So how can we add colour in to like shades of white and shades of black? That is the hard thing. So I'm going to tell you how you do this. And this is where the red and the green come in. So when I look at my reference photo then, I know from looking at this photo that the dog is very neutral in colour. It's in a very neutral scheme as well. And if I use my colour opposites, one colour will neutralise the other. So here, adding red to green will neutralise it and knock out the saturation. And the more red I add to the green, the more neutral it will become. So where I talk about green, I am talking about a mix to varying degrees of ultramarine deep yellow ochre light and white. This is giving me my green. Where I talk about red, I am using a mix of cadmium red, raw umber, black plus white. So where my dog's coat is cooler in hue, I am going to use that green mix. And where my dog's coat is warmer in hue, I am going to use that red mix. So by painting in this way, this will give you a much more convincing dog than using grey by itself. Like by grey, I mean black plus white. And it works with any colour opposite. So for example, mixing blue into orange or mixing yellow into purple. One colour neutralises the other, giving you a much more muted colour. I would really encourage you to have a go at mixing together the different colour opposites and seeing the colours that come from it because it's not until you play about with it that you really begin to get a sense and understand um, how these colours work when you do do that. I'm doing exactly the same thing as well for my blacks. Using black straight out the tube, it's, it's quite a dead colour, so we need to add to it accordingly. So whether I'm adding cad red to, to make it warm 
or I'm adding a green mix to make it cooler, I'm shifting between the two on that black head. Even though you can't see it that well because the camera isn't picking it up, for the lighter areas, we're carrying much more cooler tones than the, the really darkest darks. Painting in neutrals is hard because you are sent essentially shifting either from cool to warm, but it's so, 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 so subtle. So what I find in order to help is holding your mid-tone grey card that I talked about right at the beginning of this video. So hold it up to your reference photo and it will really help you because you'll then be able to know whether what you are looking at is warmer and cooler than what's on the card. So for example, if the area I'm painting is warmer than the mid-tone grey card, I know I need to add more of my red mix. And don't be afraid to just put a small area of paint down on the canvas as a tester. I do this all the time and I lay it and I look at it and I think, no, that's too cool. I need to remix my colour. So I just remix on my palette and then I just adjust accordingly to, to what, what is needed. You'll see as I paint in those darks that we are losing so much detail in those black areas, the darker that we get. And it's really important to try and create that form by varying your temperatures. So you constantly need to be asking yourself this question. Is it warm or is it cool? Is it red or is it green? So these are the two questions that I ask myself throughout the whole painting, no matter which area I'm working on. If I'm working on the lighter areas, as in like the greyer areas, I'm asking myself that question. If I'm working on the blacks, I'm asking myself that question. If I'm working on the background, I'm asking myself the same question. If I can't see it, I get my mid-tone grey card out and I hold it against the area on the reference photo to tell me if it's warmer or if it's cooler. For the background, I'm using a combination of ultramarine deep plus white. For the area directly above his head, I'm mixing more red into it just to warm it up a bit. I'm trying to break up that background and also introduce some of the colours that I've used in the dog, which is why then I start to add a bit of green into that blue as well.
But ultimately, I want the background to be cooler than the dog because I want the background to sit behind the dog. So I need to put more blue in it than the green. As I get towards the end of the painting, I really just work in on my edges, making sure that they are bridging across into the background colour. So for example, I might be adding areas of more green, or I might be adding more sort of red browns. It really depends where I'm trying to bridge across to. Don't be afraid to smudge it up with your finger to soften areas. You want to be selective with hard and soft edges and choose where you put them. You don't want all hard edges and you don't want all soft edges. You kind of want a mixture. And that is it. That is the finished painting. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can. And also check out my website, sarahhallidayarts.com, where you'll find examples of my work and also online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one.